Hello, hello. Thank you for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris, and welcome to part four of our Monkey Kid retrospective. We've been taking a look at every single set in the Monkey Kid theme so far, and we are on our final portion examining these sets themselves. This time, we'll be taking a look at the brand new March 2021 Spider Queen villains and all of the associated builds for that faction. Also, we'll be taking a look at some of these civilian buildings and another pair of villains which just got a kind of smaller focused feature in one of the larger sets as a side build. But without further ado, there's a ton to jump into, so let's dive right in and take a look at the Spider Queen's March 2021 villains right now. Oh ho ho ho, all right, so here we have the Wave 2 faction of Monkey Kid villains, the Spider Queen and her minions. Now, at the time of this recording, the show is not out yet, so I do not know the story in-universe explanation for all of these spiders, but I do know that these are some really, really wicked cool sets. Now, these, in my opinion, are a massive step up from the Demon Bull faction. Now, maybe some of that has to boil down to the fact that I simply like the aesthetics of the spider vehicles more than the bull vehicles, despite there only being one spider vehicle focus set. But I do honestly feel like these are much more visually interesting than what the bulls had to offer and are giving us new stuff compared to what Lego's done before, even though Lego's done a ton of spider related things before, especially in Legends of Chima. In Chima, we got a spider crawler similar-ish to this, but of course it was much more scaled down. It had a very similar front legs attacking feature. In Lego Insectoids, we got our first arachnoid star base, kind of a similar size to build, but very, very different looking. And even in Galaxy Squad, we got a spider bug crawler or a hive crawler, where when you rolled it along, the legs would actually all move, which was a pretty cool set but none of them come even close in scale and in intimidation to this absolutely massive arachnoid base here. Despite not being able to articulate four out of the eight legs, two legs here can go up or down based on the ratchet joints, and the other two legs here borrow a function from the Lego Bionicle Storm Beast set, such that you can move them up and down alternatively, or if you angle this banner piece here the right way you can actually raise both of them at the same time or alternatively like this it's a pretty fun feature this just dwarfs any spider related lego base that they've really attempted i probably want to say ever because not only do you have this massively intimidating front feature here you turn it around and you got a full base on the back here folding all the way down you've got an entire rack of different poisons and different colors, presuming different colored poisons for different types of spider attacks. You've got control panels, prisons all the way back here. And what's really cool is that you've even got a prison for the Monkey King all the way up the top here to stick him in the cobweb. I really hope that Lego continues doing spider villain theme stuff for summer of 2021 and doesn't just make this a one-way thing because I feel like there's still so much that could be done in terms of cool looking spider vehicles and they've barely scratched the surface. Besides this one feature set, we also have this side build which is pretty substantial of a large spider walker using some relatively unorthodox techniques for the legs here. It feels a little bit flimsy but actually it works out pretty well included alongside the lion guardian. We've got this container that can actually be picked up by the container hover attacker, but actually transforms into a cannon right here. You can see that folds outwards to be some sort of a projectile cannon, which is pretty nice. You've got one of the original 2020 versions of the Spider Queen alongside a little bit of landscaping, which unfortunately feels kind of out of place compared to all this other stuff now, because I presume they made this before they had all this stuff mapped out, so the color scheme isn't quite there. It's just really just a piece of rock with some transparent green detailing, but you do get a built-up version of the Spider Queen with all of her legs and kind of a creepy abdomen back here, which lifts up to reveal spiders on the inside. You have a one bike that's part of a two-pack set of bikes. This one, I will honestly say, probably the least impressive bike that they've done for Monkey Kid. This literally feels like a Ninjago build. There's nothing setting it apart from anything that Lego's ever done before, except for, I guess, the color scheme and stickers. If you remove these stickers, 
colored this red, I would have believed it was a Kai vehicle. That's how kind of generic this bike is. Not a huge fan of this bike, but you know, I get it. Lego has to include smaller bike builds in their factions, but this is easily my least favorite build. What is really nice is that many of the sets include one or two of these little spider drone builds, which honestly, when put together, makes it feel like you're truly facing off against an army of spiders. This is actually a really cool concept for a villain faction to have just different smaller builds scattered throughout all the sets. And what I do really appreciate is that so that they don't feel the same, none of these builds are actually the same. Every single build does something unique, be it the color of the legs or the spike on the back of the abdomen, the type of gun mounted on the top, the fact that this one, for example, has longer front legs than back legs. Every single one has a unique detailing to it, which honestly make them feel different, but all part of the same faction. And obviously they're all around the same size, so you can really imagine what a horde of these would look like, which I think is a really cool thing to include. Outside of this, we bizarrely have a spider-themed vending machine that actually works. It's actually really cool. You can insert a phone or a piece of money here and a drink will pop out. I, I guess maybe this is part of some sort of diabolical plan to poison the citizens of the city, trick them into drinking spider venom. Who knows? Kind of a funny detail how they have this build here though. But all in all, I just really hope that for the rest of this year, they do more with the spider villain concept. The one thing that I really love about Monkey Kid is that you really feel like you're going up against an army. As the villain faction, typically with stuff like Ninjago or even Nexo Knights sometimes, you had a ton of hero stuff and then you just get one or two villain things and they're not really that big. Here we get a massive $120 set dedicated just to the villain's main vehicle base here. And who boy is this worth $120? absolutely worth it for the price not really overpriced at all in my opinion one of my favorite monkey kid sets here even eclipses many of the monkey kid vehicles or the hero vehicles himself that's how much i love this build which is honestly one of the coolest that i've put together for a lego set but now we can move on before we get into the wrap up of these sets there isn't too much that i can do in terms of ranking here because obviously there's number one right here the big guy and then I don't know, maybe, I do like this build for the Spider Queen. So two, three, four, the vending machine's pretty good. I'll say five, the spiders as a collective. Uh, six, the crate, because it's doing something new. And then seven, the bike, because I mean, the bike's just a bike. It doesn't do anything new. Not too much we can rank here, but obviously this is such a fantastic build. I hope to see more of these spider villains, and they definitely make a formidable army despite only having one feature set which is both a pro and con to Monkey Kid sets. They've got all these side builds going on such that you can build up factions despite not buying sets related to those factions, but they do take away piece counts from the main build and sometimes can make the main focus of a set feel a little bit underutilized for the price. So there's definitely pros and cons there. But now let's set these aside and before we do the final wrap up, I want to just quickly highlight some of these side builds and other villain factions that have been briefly touched upon but aren't enough to set aside for their own segment of this video. So let's scuttle these spiders away and make room for the new sets. One of the really nice things about Monkey Kid is that it doesn't just focus on the conflict between the heroes and the villains, it also focuses on the life of regular civilians living in this world. As such, we actually get several different civilian side builds which can be combined to make up larger builds and actually are compatible with some of the creator mini modulars that they have going on or the mini modular system that they've got such that you can stack these buildings together. The excellent Lego reviewer Jangbrex has done a great video showcasing how you can combine some of these buildings with those creator mini modulars. So I won't be showing you that today. However, I will be showcasing all of these side builds together plus one more miniature villain faction. Let's just start with them because they're the oddball out. So this villain vehicle here focuses on the two demon twins. These are side characters or side villains in the Monkey Kid storyline. They appear rather infrequently, but have kind of interesting backstories and powers. I won't get into the lore too, too much here, but I will say that this is a very unique design for a vehicle. 
Not necessarily know if this is my favorite build. Looks very awkward with the propellers or dishes sticking out of the back of this villain's back over here. They also have very conflicting color schemes, which does make sense because they're supposed to clash with the blue and the orange, but it still does feel a little bit strange having them like this. That being said, I will say that this is at least very unique as a Lego build. It came as a side build for the Monkey Kid Cloud Roadster, and I can't fault it too, too much because it's just a side build. That being said, in the future, I don't know exactly how interesting larger builds focusing on these two characters might be, so I'm happy that they just stuck them in a side set or a smaller set and don't seem to be focusing on them too, too much beyond that. But then moving alongside from this awkward looking villain vehicle here, we can take a look at the much more interesting side buildings or the civilian buildings, which honestly, again, I'm a huge fan of. These two buildings right here can actually be combined like so, or you can combine them along the back here and create some sort of a building complex just using different buildings from different sets. This one right here is probably one of the best parts of the Inferno truck. It's a panda themed convenience store which even has a bank that can be ripped out of the wall and used for whatever nefarious purposes the villains want the bank for. This building right here represents the Monkey Kid's apartment complex featuring a little restaurant underneath, which I guess is Pigsy's restaurant down below, but it also has this very nice detailing and has a similar architecture to something that you would see in, say, China, which is definitely what the build is supposed to be representing. All in all, it's pretty charming and nice builds, and I honestly hope that Monkey Kid will focus a little bit more on these, and if builds like these prove to be successful, maybe they could do some sort of a smaller city set that combines all of these. That would be certainly very interesting as a contrast to the much larger Ninjago cities. In the 2021 wave, we also got a new building, the Anti-Gravity Arcade, which appeared in the show. Unfortunately, it's not nearly as beefy as these other buildings and as such cannot combine to them. It's just kind of a basic arcade. The coolest thing about it is this working Lego claw machine, which I was honestly surprised was even working until I saw a prize fall out of the bottom. So. It does actually work, pretty cool function I will say. But other than that, this is a pretty basic build. I do like the inclusion wherever they can of these newer oriental styled roof pieces, which have been cropping up in almost every single Monkey Kid set. The one thing I will say about this though is that unfortunately these stickers were clear back, which makes them very faded and translucent, making the colors not pop too, too much, which is especially apparent on the dance floor here and on the sides here, which are supposed to be white. All in all, I love these little buildings. I hope they do more. This is all right. We've also got some terrain side builds. Honestly, not too much I can talk about these ones. They're just so, so small. Really nothing to see here. Now, these are the kind of normal side builds that you would expect in like, say, a Ninjago set or something like that. So not too much I can say particularly about those side builds. The buildings though are where it's at. I hope that LEGO does more of these side buildings. And yeah, honestly, not too much I can say more about these. Let's just move back in for the wrap up and cost comparison. All right, thank you all for tuning in to this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And as usual, stay tuned for the continuation of this series where I'll be taking a look at every single Monkey Kid minifigure as well as giving my rankings for every single Lego Monkey Kid set, my favorites, my least favorites, and what recommendations I have for you to get for yourself if you're just wanting to start out with the theme. So as usual, stay tuned and thank you all for checking out this video. I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye bye for now.